Hey, how's it going out there today, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. Sporting my reflective vest today. Make sure everyone can see me. Um, thanks for tuning in, by the way. Uh, thanks for all the support I've been getting on the channel. Appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, maybe think about subscribing. If you watch the end, give me that like button and uh, leave me a comment if you, you know, uh, you got something to say other than this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, I mean, you can leave that comment, but I don't appreciate those. Um, I like I like when they say this guy knows nothing. I mean, nothing. This guy knows nothing. <laughs> uh, exaggerate much? But uh, I want to talk to you today about reefer. Been doing a lot of reefer videos. Been doing a lot of reefer work. Know a little bit about it. Been doing it for years. This ain't my first time around the block. Um, so. The point of the video today is when the pro when the temp goes down, the price should go up. And we're speaking of generalities here. And you know, trucking's not a defined everything is this way, you know. So when I speak about stuff, I don't mean like uh, one time uh, your cousin seen it happen a different way. I get it. Things happen a different way than what I explain sometimes. I'm speaking generally, you know, generally. Um, so what I mean by when the temp goes down, the price should go up is uh, when the temperature of the freight you are hauling is lower, you should get more money for that. So um, like a protect from freeze load in the winter time. I do a lot of protect from freeze. Uh, you set the reefer at like 50. They just want the product to not freeze. Most of the time that's like soda, beer, uh, you know, hygiene products, things that could freeze and ruin. Um, so those loads pay a little bit more than a dry van because really you're just running the reefer a little bit. Now let's talk the extreme opposite. Let's talk uh, ice cream loads, negative 20 degrees. For you guys that don't do reefer, just trying to learn about reefer, I'll break down some numbers for you here. Protect from freeze is typically like uh, 45 to 55 degrees. A lot of your root crops will run at those temperatures like potatoes, carrots, uh, they'll run at that temperature. Uh, most produce runs like from 34 to 50 degrees, you know, like your refrigerator at home, it, they want it run fit for like 35 to 55, somewhere in that ballpark. They want to keep it cool. Um, so they run at that temperature. Wine runs at about 50 degrees and they want to keep it cool in there, even in the summer, you know, like it's protect from freeze in the winter and it's keep it cool in the uh, 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 summer so and then you get into groceries you know your meats your cheeses your fresh food your uh, you know stuff like that typically runs from like it'll run from like right at freezing like maybe 28 degrees up to like 45 somewhere in that ballpark and then you get into your frozen foods your packaged foods your frozen meats the whatnots of that um, that breaks down like this that is ran from typically like maybe five degrees um, is the the highest I've seen a frozen food set they could go a little higher but typically about five degrees uh, is the highest I see them I'm on a zero degree load right now uh, most desserts and things like that, that's what I'm hauling right now, that's a zero degree. And then like negative 10 is your, kind of your standard frozen food temperature. And then you get into your frozen desserts, like ice cream, uh, Italian ice, things like that, that's negative 20. They're not playing with that. They want negative 20 degrees. So that's your temperature breakdown. So how that works is, um, you know, you set those temperatures and that's, that's how they run. So let's talk about trailers in relation to those loads. Now, brand new trailers um, are set with an R value. An R value is a standard of insulation. So uh, I read this off a of utility trailers website. They say the first five years of a trailer's life, you can expect to lose 5% of R value, insulating value in the first five years. So in the first five years, you're gonna lose about 5% of R value. So a five-year-old trailer should have about 75% of the insulating value that uh, a new trailer does. Why is that? Because that polyfoam insulation breaks down over time. Uh, doors get opened and closed and banged up. Seals get worn out a little bit. 
Uh, you're gonna lose a little bit through that. Cracks in the floor, things freezing and busting. It just wears on the trailer over time. Um, so keep that in mind. Over time, you lose R value, okay? So there'll be some shippers, there'll be some receivers and some brokers that only want trailers that are 10 years or newer. Now, in my experience, when the freight market's hot, they don't worry so much about what year your trailer is. In a, in a down market, when they, got the, when they can choose, they're gonna choose the people with the newer equipment. Uh, less chance of breakdowns and whatnot. It's a better R value. It's just better for their product. That's all they're worried about, their product. Uh, right, rightfully so. So, let's talk about these uh, older trailers. Uh, so, say you buy a 10-year-old trailer. Does that mean it's useless? Heck no, it does not mean it's useless. A lot of good 10-year-old trailers out here on the market. But, you're going to be limited in what you can haul. Uh, some brokers won't, won't let you... Uh, take a load some shippers won't load that 10 year old trailer so you got to factor in some things like that uh, next thing you got to factor in is um, personally taking personal liability do you want to put a negative 20 degree ice cream load in a in a 10 year old trailer that's probably lost 60 it's probably lost 40 percent of its insulating value um, you know it maybe not doesn't blow as cool of air as that you would like um, so, do you want to take the personal risk and responsibility of putting, you know, a hundred thousand dollar ice cream load on an older trailer going into South Texas? Probably not this guy. I probably wouldn't do that. Um, I think once trailers get to a certain age, maybe like that, maybe like that seven, eight, nine, ten year old range, depending on what kind of shape they're in, uh, you may want to steer clear of some of the frozen food loads in the summertime. In the winter, when it's 20 degrees outside, you're not making up that big of a difference. See, that's the key to me. Outside temperature to inside temperature. Right now, it is currently 70 degrees outside. 70 degrees outside, may, uh, zero in the trailer. So I'm making up 70 degrees. I'm making up 70 degrees difference. Now, if you're in you know, South Texas and it's 110 degrees and you got a negative 20 ice cream load on, that reefer unit is gonna be working super hard. So they make trailers that are extra insulated. Um, you know, most brands make a bigger, heavier duty version of their trailers. Uh, I currently have a Great Dane trailer behind me. It is an Everest Super Seal. So it does have extra insulation. Um, and I pretty much, this is like a two year old trailer. Um, you know, I'd pretty much load anything on it at this point. It, it's new. It's still got a lot of its R value and it's heavier insulated, so it started off with a better insulating value. Uh, therefore, I'm not as worried about putting, uh, you know, frozen food on it. Matter of fact, I picked this trailer just for the fact of this summer I plan on doing frozen food because, like I said, when the temp goes down on the freight and the outside temperature goes up, the bigger the separation, the more that load should pay because it's harder on your equipment and you're taking more risk. So if, you know, so if you're gonna pull frozen food in the summertime, number one, make sure you got the equipment to do that. Number two, um, you know, accept the risk and the responsibility of doing that. Um, and you should get paid more because here's how I look at it. When you limit the amount of competition, like the guys with the older trailers, um, you know, in the middle of the summer, you know, in Florida, I'm in Florida right now, you know, it's early morning and it's already 70 degrees in uh, April, you know? Um, crazy to have to look at the calendar and know what month it is, but I do. Uh, so, you know, as the temp goes up to 90 degrees today, I'm gonna be making up a 90 degree difference from uh, outside temperature to my trailer temperature. Uh, so, I expect this load to pay better because I, I'm taking on more risk and there's less competition. That's the name of the game. That's when, you know, supply and demand. That's the whole point of one going up, one going down. Um, now, if this was, you know, if this was a load of uh, watermelons at, you know, 45 degrees, uh, most reefer units could keep up with that. It's not gonna be the end of the world. But when you're talking frozen foods in warm climates, you better have the right trailer, guys. Uh, so think of that if you go to buy a trailer, keep that in mind. Am I going to be limiting? Uh, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, you know, buy a certain trailer because oh, I can't haul frozen food. Plenty of freight to haul that's not frozen food. But 
my opinion, if you're going to get a trailer and you're going to spend that extra money to get up into that level of where it's comfortable to haul frozen food in the summer in the south, then I want to be paid for it. I want to be compensated for it because you know what? In a few years, this trailer's not going to be comfortable for me to be doing that. Okay, so I got to get the money now because in the, like five to six years, I'm going to need to redo this situation. So got to get the money now out of it. Uh, that's the point of the whole thing is don't sell yourself short. Acknowledge your value. And uh, that's a little bit of reefer insight for you there. Just something to think about. Mull it over. I appreciate everybody watching. If you made it this far, hit that thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Check out the description. Get that mud flap out if you buy your own fuel. And I'm going to wag my finger at you if you don't have it. Use my promo code. Uh, get yourself $10 in free fuel. Gets me $10 in free fuel. And uh, check out my Twitter. I got another channel, Trucking with Diabetes, down there. Check that one out. I do have type 2 diabetes. I make videos about that on my other channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. Click on one of these other videos and keep, uh, keep on cashing on. Thanks, everybody. Take care of each other out there. Bye.